Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronics Specifier at Productronica. I'm on the Siemens Digital Industries software stand with Mark Lang, and we're going to talk about a project that Siemens have going with some equipment manufacturers in the production uh, equipment uh, sector. Mark, can you just talk us through that project and how it's playing out internally and then maybe with customers as well? Sure. Great to be here, Mick. It's Thank been you. a good show today. Uh, it's certainly getting bit busier. Uh, each day, Excellent. so hopefully uh, the next couple of days will continue to be great. Um, yeah, so we've um, Siemens in a, is in a unique position where we are, you know, one of the, the premier providers of software. Um, we are taking information from the design environment, uh, but we ultimately need to get it to the various machine vendors, and so uh, we, we look to develop our full digital twin of the product. You know, what we want to buy, what we want to build. But then also we need to be able to take that information and, and drive it into production. And some of the challenges our customers have seen in the last uh, few years has been obviously the results of COVID. Components are getting harder to, to get hold of. They need to be more flexible in managing those components. Um, and that's requiring them to build less and less products in batches. So they're, they're constantly you know, within the day now changing from one product to another. Now, we have a nice digital twin of that product, but we still need to get that information down into the machine vendors. So there's only so much we can do. Um, so it's very much a key to, to partner with the machine vendors to be able to uh, understand what we have, how they can take advantage of it, and ultimately use that information to reduce these changeover times uh, for our mutual customers' benefit. So working with people like uh, Juki and Neartech allows us to create those um, tighter integration um, to be able to address those challenges that they have um, and then be able to take advantage so that um, ideally we're, we're targeting to achieve a, a lot size of one meaning each, comp each board is unique compared to the next one and, and we're still away, away from that uh, but it'll, we can achieve that with these close partnerships uh, with the machine vendors. Um, we're talking about PCB assembly here, so what's the technology behind this that will make it go forward? Yeah, so um, one of the keys is being able to understand design data. So if we're talking electronics assembly, then there's been electronics design. Uh, Siemens has a, a very strong presence from the IC design perspective. Uh, to PCB design as well and and some of their other competitors uh, will all need to provide that information ultimately to to get these boards built so we focus on our technology of being able to really understand the design and the design intent and exactly what makes up that product um, because everyone has their own conventions, their own ways of doing things, their own formats, and yet it's up to the, the electronics manufacturers to, to know how to deal with that. Um, and that's our unique capability of really understanding what's in that data, so we can bring it together to create this digital twin of the product and then drive that through in a starting off in a virtual environment to ultimately create that product in the real world when it goes into manufacturing. Okay, we're looking at electronics manufacturers undergoing a digital transformation to remain competitive. Can you tell us how Siemens will help with that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, our customers have really seen a, a fundamental shift in the last few years. You know, if we go back five, 10 years, it was all about speed, it was all about high, uh, high performance, it was just build, build as many as you can, uh, for as long as you can and, and really what we've seen is that that ch the challenges that have been brought by industry 4.0 and the ability to essentially build a lot size of one um, and to, to be able to do that you just have to be able to uh, do a lot more uh, virtually uh, in the digital world um, than, than in the real world you know when you're in the real world you need to be building products and so to get ready for the next product means you know, doing a lot more work virtually, um, offline, uh, in the com on computers, versus in the real world and testing and, and, and adjusting. We just, you just can't afford to be doing that. 
And so we've really seen that um, being driven by our customers in the last few years. Um, ironically, we actually had a very good solution many years ago for these challenges. Um, but the focus of that was a, was a little different for what uh, the reasons I gave. Uh, but now everyone's moving towards um, that, those lower volumes. Uh, a lot of companies are now reshoring, uh, bringing production back from the Far East in, in local environments. Uh, and those are all uh, needing to you know, focus on the, on the efficiencies to be able to compete. And so the software is a key part of that, and as well as the integration to the machines as well. It all has to come together as a, uh, as a tight integration. Um, and obviously Siemens is focused on the software piece. Mm -hmm. So we also need to be working with our partners to ultimately deliver that, uh, the information in that digital twin uh, to those machines so they, our customers can uh, benefit from the results. Um, we're looking here, we're talking about digital thread and closed loop feedback. So can you just, uh, just expand on that a little for us? Yeah, very much so. So there's a lot of the, uh, it's not just a single solution here. Um, we need to go from, there's IC design, there's uh, electronics design, uh, then there's electronics manufacturing, and then ultimately the shop floor solutions as well. Um, and there needs to be tight integration between all of those. And we can think of the, we talked about the digital twin. The digital twin is the, is the product, what we're going to do. Um, but the digital thread is really the connections between those products and how we pass that information from one place to another. Don't lose information that was added already, but also be able to add additional information to further benefit the next steps as well. And then as, as production happens and you start to understand what's worked and, in, and it also what's not working, you know, be able to, to, to look at that and correct that. Uh, and so be able to feed that information back to earlier stages so that you don't make those mistakes next time and continue to improve the efficiency um, as we move from one product to another. Okay, and, and there's some assembly line challenges along the way. Again, can you just talk us through those and again how Siemens can provide a solution? Yeah, so the, um, on, from a production perspective, we're not really geared up for this you know, lot size of one today. Uh, the car industry has certainly been doing this for many years. Uh, you go to any high volume car manufacturer, yep. look at their facility, and every car will be different. Yep. There's all these different uh, options and configurations and customization. And that's what we're now starting to see from uh, the customers building electronics products. So this ability to create a right first time program is, is very important uh, in this changeover from one product to another, which ultimately will result in the ability to build uh, each product uniquely uh, and, and bring that same level of customization. But to do that requires you know, software solutions from Siemens, it requires the participation and coordination with the machine vendors, so there's a lot of uh, work that has to be done to bring those together um, to ultimately achieve that goal. Um, but it's certainly achievable. Um, it'll just take a bit of work to, uh, to, to bring that together. Um, and that's part of the reasons that we do in the show is to make those relationships and to develop those uh, um, partnerships. Okay, because you talked about customization of cars, using that as an example. If we're talking about that in electronic products, I guess one of the points here is uh, that uh, with Siemens help and your partner's help, they can get to to market quicker. I mean, yep. be honest, if you, you, you customize a car, you can be waiting six months before it shows up. <laughs> so, you know, here probably we haven't got that, that generous amount of time. So maybe no, if you absolutely. can just help us out and see how much time you can save and the cost savings there. Sure, yeah, so if, we, if you think about how, what, how much an electronics machine typically will cost, you're looking maybe somewhere between five, six hundred dollars an hour. Okay, so if that machine is sitting idle for an hour, that's five, six hundred bucks you've lost. And so the, the machine is, is generating uh, value while it's running. In other words, it's not generating value when it's not running. So work that can be done in a virtual environment in the software can save 90% uh, of that cost. So 30, 40, 50 dollars an hour. Um, and so if I can spend an hour doing something offline, and save that hour 
that's a huge saving that is passed on to the uh, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And so it's been able to to to, to use the software um, to do those things to avoid the the downtime on the machines um, and therefore increase the efficiency um, and and take advantage of whatever the product the part numbers are and the parts that are available um, in the supply chain. You know, so parts that we had last week we might not be able to get them this week, and, and it's a different part that's available the week after. So again, all of that has to be uh, incorporated into the, the programs so that uh, boards can be manufactured in a, in a timely and efficient manner. Okay, and that, uh, that, that sourcing components, that mm -hmm. comes through part, well, your Velo uh, database and mm -hmm. working with supply frame as well, is that correct? Yeah, so there's, um, the, the, the Valor parts library really gives us that deep uh, information on what these parts actually look like. Okay, so we're not reliant on having the physical part in. We've got a database of, of parts that we can look up, import that information, and then be able to incorporate that into the digital twin. The design data gives us the, the bare PCB, the, the board data, but the ERP system with its um, bill of materials is where we get the, the, the components themselves, the, 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 the bill of materials data. Sure. Yeah. And so we bring those two things together and that's part of the, the capability we have are those being able to integrate and, com and connect those two very different uh, design formats um, and, ch and the challenges of how those are done. That's part of what our unique capability is to provide uh, is the ability to bring those together um, and then take that into that single digital twin and then pass it down into the machines after that. Okay, Mark Lang, thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed, Mick. Okay.